first off, welcome to the Teaching and Learning Center's uh, 10th anniversary series. Uh, I'm Darcy Norman, I'm one of the uh, educational technology type people here at the Teaching and Learning Center. Um, and today, Les, Dr. Leslie Reed is going to be talking about some uh, uh, project work that she's done with her students in one of her courses. Uh, Dr. Reed is the Tamarack Teaching Professor for Geosciences, which means basically she gets to experiment with some cool new teaching stuff. She gets to play as a teacher and work as a mentor for grad students and other faculty. So it, it, it's really an impressive thing that uh, Geosciences is doing. Uh, what she's planning on talking about today is uh, Geology 301, which started off as a 13-week series of lectures uh, with 300 students. And she's going to talk about how she went through the process of getting to a place where she wanted to redesign the course, what that meant, and the output, which is now down to 250 students, I believe. And it's a lecture plus project, group project thing. So talking about process of course design, but I think also what you were saying, the personal journey, how you get to the place where you want to redesign the course and what does that mean? So that should be interesting. Um, we are actually recording the talk. If it works out, we'll put a version of it on the website. So hopefully, uh, uh, so if you, you know, ask questions, just be aware that your voice may be on tape. Uh, but uh, Dr. Reed. Thanks, Darcy. <laughs> well, thank you all for coming um, and taking time out of uh, your schedule. It's a very busy time of year to hear about this journey, and it's a it's a story, really. I'll try to tell a story today about the journey that I took with last uh, winter with 250 students and four teaching assistants and a handful of my colleagues that acted as cheerleaders and mentors and supporters, and some of the teaching and learning staff, uh, mainly Patty Dujour, took this journey with me and supported it. So it's a it's a it's a transformative story about, a, as Darcy said, um, a large science service course that had 300 students in it that was lecture-based, um, turned into a combination lecture team projects-based class. And so um, this is its story. Uh, the class ge is uh, Geology 301. Uh, the, I, I'm from the Geoscience Department, and in our department we actually offer six courses that are designed for non-science majors. And these courses traditionally are very large, they're lecture-based, uh, there are no labs, and they are one instructor with 300, 400 students, traditionally. And when I started teaching in the Geoscience Department in 2002, um, and, and I had a teaching load of five courses a year, usually one or two of those courses uh, that was assigned to me was one of these science service courses, of which Geology 301 is one of them. And um, the, the first time I actually walked into this lecture theater, it was Science Theater 140 or 148, one of the really huge ones, and uh, uh, the ink was drying on my dissertation and my contract here at the <laughs> university, and thought, wow, you know, Geology 209, this is great. And, and walked into that room and saw this vast sea of, of expectant and enthusiastic faces. And, and I can really remember the feeling I had of, um, A, what am I doing here? How am I qualified to do this? Um, B, how am I going to give these students something that's meaningful to them? And that was about seven years ago. And, and for the next four years, I had this sort of um, dissonance, I guess, in my head about I was teaching in a way that was lecture-based with multiple choice tests, but in the back of my mind was wanting to do something different in these classes for these students. And um, so I, I got the Tamarat uh, teaching professor position, which uh, afforded me the opportunity to try something different. It, it allowed me to have a reduced teaching load, as well as some time to think carefully and thoughtfully about what one could do in a class like this um, that is sustainable and that is worthwhile for the instructors, the teaching assistants, and the students involved. Uh, the title of this course is um, Geology 301. It's a course about the geology of the mountains of Western Canada. And uh, it's a course that students take, uh, if they want, if they choose to, as a science option, uh, following Geology 209, which is another course we offer, which is called Intro to Geosciences for non-science majors. So what were the motivations for the redesign? Well, I would say ultimately the motivation was what really this uh, sense of, I guess, professional uh, dissatisfaction is what I call it. It was this desire to do something different that, that persisted for enough years that I thought, well, instead of complaining about these large classes and there's nothing to do and it's 
just lecturing and, 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 and it's, it's not satisfying. I thought, okay, I better start putting my money where my mouth is and try something differently. And I was really kept asking myself this question of what, what is important and meaningful to these students that are coming from other faculties and taking these courses as part of the program requirements. And two of the things I really wanted to focus on in particular was um, increasing student engagement. And more, more specifically, I wanted to try to deal with um, the faculty-student interaction, which was really pretty much minimal to zero. Uh, I didn't interact with a lot of students in the traditional course. A handful of students would ask me questions after class or come by my office hours. But they were mostly the same students for the, for, for the year. So I knew there was, I was probably interacting with about 10% of the class, and the rest of the class was just coming and going, and there was sort of no connection. And I wanted that connection. And I also wanted to make the class more active, uh, as opposed to me lecturing three times a week for 50 minutes and then having a series of multiple choice tests. I wanted to have more activity in the class as a whole. I also wanted to focus a little bit on the content of the course. Traditionally, when I started teaching the course, uh, it, was, it was very much content heavy. It was about the tectonic history and the geologic history and resources and natural hazards of the Cordillera or, or the mountains of Western Canada. And I wanted to keep that component of the course, but I also wanted to bring in some of these um, topics that, that fold into to the broader uh, concept of science literacy. And I wanted to talk more and have students exposed more to the nature of science. How do scientists think? What do they do when they do research as geologists in the mountains? And I also wanted to bring in this aspect of science and society. Because I knew the students there, the demographics of the class, they were mainly business students, fine arts students, communication and culture students. These were students in my mind that were going on to be teachers, policy makers, lawyers, doctors. And, and it would be helpful to, for, for them to have at least some part of their university experience, if I could make this course somehow relate more to, to science and society and how it's relevant to them in their everyday lives. So the, uh, in, in, I, I first taught this course in 2006, and then again in 2007 in the traditional way. And this was how the course was originally set up. It's a science option course, there were 300 students, three lectures a week, three multiple choice tests. Uh, the breakdown of the marks, so the way in which the students were assessed in the traditional way that this course was taught was there were two tests throughout the term and one final exam, all multiple choice. And um, so that's how I taught it for two years. Now the second year I taught it, 2007, I, I thought I wanted to know, learn more about the students and why, what, the, what was their motivation for taking Geology 301 when they could have taken other science options. And so at the beginning of the year, in 2007, I, I gave the students a, a little open-ended question survey. And I asked them three questions. The first question was, you know, what are you interested in learning about in this class? And uh, the students, uh, really, the responses fell into two categories, broadly speaking. They wanted to learn about the geology of the mountains. And then a lot of students commented that they wanted to learn things that would enhance their experience that they already had in the mountains. And they knew they were going to take, like um, skiing and hiking and camping uh, when they were driving through the mountains. So they, so they spoke about that at the beginning of the course. This was the sort of learning experience they were hoping to, to get out of this course. Another question I asked in the same survey was, do you have any concerns about this course? And the number one concerns that the students had were large class size. So it wasn't just a concern of mine, it was a concern of theirs as well, that they were taking this class and it was really large, and, and how is that all going to you know, work out for them in terms of being an, an interesting learning experience? Uh, the second concern was cumulative exams. Uh, there, this course in particular doesn't have a textbook that came up as a concern of theirs as well. And, uh, and the, the, the other concern that came out in the survey was that, that it would be too scientific, that there would be, it would be laden with jargon and terminology, and they would have a, what, they, what I called an insufficient background. So these were the concerns that came out in 2007. And then the third question I asked was, I, I asked students to describe their knowledge, how they thought their knowledge was coming into this mountains course. And most of them said, even though they had taken Geology 209, that they felt their knowledge was limited, poor, nothing, zero, not very good. Uh, and others would say, well, I, I know what I learned in Geology 209, which is the intro course that's a prerequisite to this one. But then a lot of them said something really interesting as well. They said, well, my knowledge of, ge of geology is, is experiential. It's, uh, I go hiking, and I go skiing, and I go snowboarding in the mountains, or I drive through the mountains. And 
so I see the geology around me, so I know of that. I know there are mountains to the west of me that I'd like to know more about. So at the end of 2007, and the beginning uh, of, of this new position that I now hold, I sat back with this information I had in front of me, the student surveys, my own feelings of how I'd like the course to go, um, what I was starting to learn about student engagement and effective educational practices, and what I was starting to learn about scientific literacy. So I was kind of on my own journey as well, learning about educational practices that were effective and go beyond lecturing, and, and about scientific literacy and how courses like these science service courses um, could, could help build scientific literacy amongst non-science majors. So I sort of asked myself personally these questions at the end of the course as I was reflecting in 2007. You know, what did I want the students to get out of the course? What did I think the students wanted to get out of this course? And I, I was looking back at their survey answers for that. What are the students currently getting out of, out of this course? And then question number four, which really led to the, to the redesign, was what changes could I utilize with the, with the support I knew I was going to have in this course um, to redesign this, to either enhance or improve the learning outcomes or just the student experience. I wasn't necessarily focused on, I wanted the students to learn more, to have a greater conceptual change in scientific understanding. Part of me just thought, well, if they could just have a more interesting and engaging experience, that was enough. So, these were, this is what led me. This is where I was at uh, in the summer of 2007. This was a couple months I kept mulling this over periodically. I felt lecturing had to be reduced and activity had to increase. It was the basics. But I knew the class wasn't going to get any smaller. It was going to be 250 to 300 students. And there wasn't going to be a lot of TA support. So I had managed to secure one teaching assistant from our department. Traditionally, these courses have no teaching assistant support, except for perhaps invigilating the exam. So I managed, I, I went to the department head and said, look, this is what I want to do. Can I have one teaching assistant for the term? And that was agreed upon. And uh, so I knew I had one teaching assistant, and I paid out of uh, re a little pool of research money I have for three others. So I knew, okay, I could have four teaching assistants for the term to help me with this. So I mulled over, what could I do, what could I do, what could happen, what could happen, how can I do this and this and deal with this? Well, I knew individual projects were out of the question because 300 of them was going to be an impossible, I felt, situation for grading and managing. So I kept coming to this, well, they got to do something in teams. And the lecturing I knew had to stop because I'm a compulsive lecturer. If I'm standing here and people are sitting there, I can't stop. And so I knew that the course had to be structured in such a way that I didn't get sucked in up here and everybody sitting back there and me talking and everybody listening. So I kept coming back to team projects. Somehow this course has to have a team project. Now my initial reactions and the reactions of people I polled in my hallway interviews with other students and colleagues and faculty and friends were like, oh, team projects. Students will hate it. You will hate it. Team projects are terrible. You have to work together. It's no fun. The workload will be crazy overwhelming. You will just fall under a sea of grading. Why would you do that? Uh, the course evaluations will go down. You're going to try this thing that's crazy. You're going to tweak something that you know already works, supposedly, at least gets relatively decent USRI ratings. That's going to go down. And the other concern that I heard, and I had a little bit myself, was, was the academic content going to go down? Was this not going to be academic anymore? Was this not going to be a good post-secondary course? The students from now are going to have 13 weeks of the geologists standing in front of them espousing information to them. And so these were concerns that ran through my mind, and they, they, were, they were also supported with the occasional, you know, I'd see a colleague in the hallway or even a student in the hallway and say, hey, you know, I'm thinking of doing this in my, my course next winter. Team projects, oh no, I had this team project once, and this person did it, it was terrible. So these were all operating in the back of my mind. So after that, I thought about it, and I thought, well, I'm going to start structuring the course. And this is where um, Patty came in, and I contacted Patty DeJour, and she worked with me as the, as the cheerleader and supporter, and, and also helped me come up with this design. So I thought, I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to try this team project thing. So I structured the course uh, totally differently. The lecturing was going to happen, but it was only going to happen for the first half of the course. 
The students, in my view, I felt needed some content to build on so they could come up with project ideas they were interested in. There were gonna be two smaller tests during this time period, so they'd get some of their, their course marks from that. And then the remainder of the class, once the lecturing stopped, the second half of the term was gonna be dedicated to working on team projects. So I was gonna stop lecturing, and they were gonna start working on the projects. And I broke down the, the, the marks like as, as such. So they had two tests, they had a team project that was now worth a little over half of their final grade, and then they had a series of learning assessments which I carefully crafted as ways for me to get feedback from them throughout the term about how they felt and thought and reflected upon the team project experience. And then out of this uh, large lump of marks that the team projects were going to consist of, I broke that down into a series of smaller steps or stages that the project would entail. So there would be a proposal component that was worth some marks. They would have to hand in team meeting minutes and they were required to meet once a week over those six weeks. That they, the project itself was worth um, a relatively large chunk of the mark, and that their evaluation and project presentation. So I broke up that 55% into these smaller steps. And these smaller steps, I also purposely put in the proposal and the meeting minutes and the team contract. So myself and the teaching assistants could also be providing feedback to each team. So we knew what was happening throughout the term, and, and some team wasn't sort of going off in a direction that they weren't supposed to be going off in, and we didn't catch it in time. But still, after this careful design, and, uh, and, and, and having Patty in my corner, and, and there were some other champions in my corner, I have to say, not everybody was like, some people were like, that's interesting. I think that's cool. I hope that works. Um, I'm still left with this feeling, I have to say, like, oh, I can't believe that I'm going to actually attempt this. So what I did to comfort myself was uh, I turned to the literature. And I, I occasionally, for, uh, this, this all happened over the fall, this redesign. And what I would do when I had a few minutes spare time is i just search in, in, in you know, the reference journals and educational journals and whatnot on team projects. And that was actually very comforting because what I found that had been published in the literature was there was a lot of team projects. And what I was looking for more when I was reading these uh, papers on team projects were what were the challenges that other people had faced when they did this? And what, what challenges did students report facing? And, and then I, I actually found that there were about four main challenges, and I, and, and I addressed those in, in the design. And the one, the major one that students really uh, disliked was if the project was an add-on. So there were still all these lectures, still all these assignments, and team projects just glued into the course now as extra work. That, that um, if the project rationale and ex expectations weren't clear, uh, the students didn't have a very enjoyable team project experience. They just felt that they were waffling around in, in, in some nebulous space and didn't know what was expected of them. Uh, the social issues were a major challenge. That was um, um, how, are we, how do students meet and form teams was reported in the literature as something that's very challenging, especially in larger classes where students may not know anybody else in the and then dealing with social loafers, which was a term I learned in the literature, and these were how do teams, is there a structure in place so students could deal with somebody that wasn't pulling their weight? And, um, and then if the grade, the other main thing was if the grading scheme didn't reflect how much time and effort the project was worth. So if, you, if the course was designed the, and the, this team project, they were supposed to work on it for six weeks and it was worth 10% of their grade, that the students, uh, they, felt, they felt they got these mixed messages. That, well, you're asking me to work a lot on it, but it's not worth that much. So I dealt with those. With the add-on effect, uh, by, by I just, I, I had to lose content, and I did. Six weeks of lectures were gone. And, and I have to say, that wasn't as easy as I was saying it was right now. It was hard to let go of content. All that content was very dear to me. I, th I felt it was very important for students to learn, and I had to let that go, and I did. So these six weeks of lectures were gone, and I restructured these weeks of lectures and, and tried to make them more efficient. So the most salient points uh, and information and content that I felt they should uh, hear from me or learn from me would come in, in, in this time before the team projects. So that's how I dealt with the add-on effect. And um, I also dealt with um, the uh, I didn't want this to be perceived as, okay, I'm gonna go off and have a six week break, and you guys are gonna be working on your projects. I turned these time periods into team project meeting times. So the students were required
required to meet once a week and check in with myself and the TAs who would go to the room and, and talk to the teams and check in, how's it going, where are you guys at, how are your meetings going, and they had to hand in minutes as well to us or email them to us afterward. So this is how I dealt with the add-on effect and then not having time in class to work on the projects. So students didn't have to worry about trying to find a time outside of all their varied schedules to meet. They had a one hour week time that they already had their schedules to meet. So these former lecture times became their team project meeting times. With the unclear expectations, well, I started off by I dedicated two whole classes, one at the beginning of the term, and very clearly explained why I was doing the team project, why they were going to be doing the team project, why the course had a team project in it, and what I wanted them to get out of it. And then a lot of the work that I did with Patty and, and that Patty helped me with was designing the whole project outline. So I developed, developed a three-page document that clearly outlined what the project was about, what were the criteria, what were we expecting, when were things due, what were the different components, and included in that was a very detailed grading rubric. So they had that right at the beginning of the course. How could they get an A grade on their team project? What criteria were we going to be looking for? and how could they work towards that. So there was nothing nebulous about it that, that I felt. I wanted it to be very transparent. Broke the project down into these steps. So the project proposal was due in the first month, the teams had to be formed, then the next stage was the minutes, and then they had to do a team contract. So there were these steps along the way, these measured steps, uh, before the really large project was due. And then required weekly meetings. And those weekly meetings um, helped them get together and meet, it helped us check in once a week with each team so we could provide mentoring and feedback. And if a team was going off the rails, um, we could help them get back on the rails and focus on what the important part of the projects were about. The so solutions to the social challenges. Well, the first challenge I felt was uh, I chose to let the students form their own teams. And I knew that some students in this class don't know anybody else in the class. So um, in order to help sort of facilitate students meeting people they, they, they didn't know, um, I created a discussion board at Blackboard. And some of the students who, who liked meeting other people in an online form like that utilized that, and they found teammates that way. And then there were students who said, I just don't like meeting people in a discussion board. I want to, I wanna, you know, I kind of like to meet people in person. And, and so I dedicated some lecture times to, um, to just a, 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 like a mix and mingle. Like, okay, lectures, you know, done early. Um, if people are interested in meeting other people with, with similar interests for a project topic, now's the time to do that. Now I can kind of help go around and facilitate those interactions. And amazingly enough, they, they, in the course, by the end of the first month, uh, the first th thing they had to do was uh, submit to me their, their team, who their team was going to be made of. Uh, and then we would we'd set them up as a, as a team group on Blackboard. And, and it happened. They, it, was, it was miraculous, uh, in my view. They, they all arranged themselves into teams. And, and some of the students required my help, not that many, so I can't, I can't really meet anybody, and I would sort of um, help students link up together. But the majority of the teams, of which there were 62, um, uh, found themselves. In fact, uh, what, what some of the students told me, uh, I actually felt the first day when I told them there was going to be a team project that enrollment was going to just go phew, that they were going to run out of Geology 301 and drop it immediately and take something else. And actually what happened was the course, which wasn't quite full in the first week of classes, filled. And I couldn't quite figure out why that was until I talked to a few students and they said, well, when I found out there was a team project, I told my friend to take the course so we could at least be together in a team. So I thought that was quite remarkable. Um, and so, but they, but they formed teams and they did that. I had them do a group contract. And this was something I'd read about in the literature was, was some people would, would say is imperative if students are gonna be working in teams. That um, this, this idea of a contract is something they do at the beginning that lays out that all the team members agree on, how are they gonna communicate, what roles are they going to have in the team? What's expected of each team member? What's going to happen if somebody isn't meeting expectations? Which was the key. So each team was required to do a contract. I gave them a template to do it. So it was really fill in the blanks here. And they had to come up with, uh, most importantly, what was going to happen if the team felt that someone wasn't meeting expectations. And that was invaluable. Because
because there were a handful of teams that, that there was some tension that developed as the weeks went on. And when they came to see me, I could just pull out their contract and say, okay, well, here are the steps you guys agreed on as a team to take. So, you know, let, let's go through these steps you all agreed on and see if we can come to a resolution. And um, in all of the cases that worked, there was no one team that had to be um, uh, disassembled. And there was an ultimate clause I had in the team projects that if students really felt that their experience was terrible because of their team dynamics, that I, I knew I was gonna um, allow students to, to disassemble teams and either do the project on their own or form smaller teams. It never came to that, luckily. And then at the end, I had a team evaluation. And students liked knowing that at the beginning, that there was going to be a format for which they could evaluate how they felt they behaved as a team member, their contribution, and their other team members. And it was a relatively simple evaluation because I knew there was going to be 300 of them, so it, was like, it really used a numerical scale. But the students um, all agreed that they wanted something like this in case there was a situation and they wanted to make sure that I knew that somebody didn't hold their weight in the team. And um, so these I felt were important components and I'm very glad that I did this and the students were too. Okay, the solutions to the problem that, that I read about in the literature, that the, I called it the work versus worth. So they did all this work on team projects, but they were only worth 10%. Well, the solution to that was I made it worth a little over half of the course mark. They were gonna spend over, a little over half the course working on it, so I made a little over half of the marks worth it, and then broke it down into these stepwise components. So what actually happened in the winter of 2008? Well, I have to say the night before the first class, I, I really almost, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not exaggerating. I was lying in bed thinking, I'm not going to do it. I have all the lectures from 2007. I'm not ready. It's, it's not going to work. I'm terrified. There, there's going to be a, a, just an outbreak of, of outrage when I present this to the class. So I, I did not sleep that night. I, I lay there. Uh, you know, just trying to make this decision of whether I was going to go forward with it or not. I went forward with it. Because I, I told too many people I was going to do it, actually. <laughs> that they, I felt I was now accountable. How was I going to explain not doing it after I'd been talking and, 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 and you know, got Patty involved, you've done so much work helping me design the rubrics and the, uh, I just, I knew I had to do it. So the first class, which was a general overview of the whole course, I introduced the students to this team project. I gave them the same survey I gave them in 2007. And as you can imagine, um, you know, what are you interested in learning about? Similar topics came up. Um, what do you, how, how would you describe your background? Similar topics came up. What are your concerns about in this course? Team projects. And I also asked them why is that a concern? And they listed the same concerns that had been, you know, not surprisingly, talked about in the literature and talked about in the hallway interviews I had with colleagues and students as well. Oh, I did this team project once and it was terrible. You know, someone, they never showed up and then they got all the marks and it was just, it was just not just. So the whole second class I spent talking about the project, why I had done it, what steps I had taken to deal with all of the concerns, and then I invited students to uh, come and share with me and help look at all the documents that were available to them on Blackboard and if they felt there was a way based on their experience or another course they've taken that we can improve upon these documents, I invited them to help me out. And actually, there's students from the business school, the Hussein School of Business, who are very good at team projects, they are very skilled at them, came up and actually gave me a better uh, uh, team evaluation. They, they helped me out with that. They said, yeah, we've seen ones like that, we've done ones like that before, don't do that. Here's a much more simple one, this one works, we liked it. And so that was great, so uh, soliciting their input was invaluable. And getting their buy-in, as you can imagine, was invaluable. And spending this time, even though it was a whole lecture on the team projects, was invaluable. And then just before the team projects started, I had a second class that I dedicated to the team projects again. And in that class, we talked about what is being a good team member all about? So again, I gave up some content. I can't believe we're not gonna talk about earthquakes today. We're gonna talk about how to be a good team member, but I felt it was important, and so we did. We talked about what, what are the characteristics of a good team member? What are the characteristics of a not-so-good team member? And we had a discussion about that. And so 
Um, you know, we kind of talked about what, you know, what, what's a good leadership role and, and, and what is not. And, and, and that led them into working on their projects together. So after all of that, the next, um, um, well, so it's during the first five weeks, so after the second class, there were lectures and tests, like, like, like before. The teams formed during this time, and their proposals, which they handed in just before the actual project work started, they handed them in, one page proposal, and myself and the teaching assistants vetted them. We read them over, we gave them some feedback, nice idea, and what we found mostly was this, what the students proposed to do was humongous. We're gonna do a poster and a video, we're gonna interview three scientists, and it was great, their enthusiasm was great, and what we helped them do was sort of reduce it down. Pick one of those great ideas on that topic. So after this point, there was reading days, and then we got into the projects. So uh, each, each team met once a week in the former lecture times. They'd checked in with us. We would ask them how it was going. They would have their meeting. And they were all required in those weekly meetings to hand in meeting minutes so we could have a record and they, they were accountable to themselves and we could see that the teams were not uh, you know, skipping out on meetings and leaving everything till the last minute. Uh, in this time period, the projects were completed and handed in. And then in the following week, uh, we set up over the series of the lecture times as well uh, a forum for them to do presentations on their projects, which was a lot like a science fair. So there were projects set up all over the teaching and learning center, and uh, and and, uh, and this, the teaching assistants um, would the, each student had to had ten minutes to each group had ten minutes to present their project verbally orally to. Um, to us, like a science fair judge, which is a teaching assistant, and they evaluated them based on their communication skills and, and how they work together as a team in that presentation. So that all happened as well in the last week. So I think I've mentioned this earlier, the teams were three to five students, I let them self-select. Uh, the overarching criteria for the topic of the projects was they, they had to pick a topic that was related to the course, the mountains of Western Canada, the geology. And I also had them, um, the projects had to somehow take a topic they were interested in that had to do with mountains or geology of Western Canada and present it in a way that related the science in society. So they had to present the material they learned about in the topic of their project in a way that was going to be relevant to non-scientists. Because in the back of my mind I was always thinking, geez, I want more science literacy in this course. I want more of the science in society. And so I, did, I, I gave them lots of variable formats to use. They could hand their project in as a poster. They could do a narrated presentation in PowerPoint with a video. They could do a book. I gave them a couple other formats like this. Every form, they could pretty much use every format except a paper. I didn't want them to hand in a paper that they were trying to write to me. I wanted them to do their project as if they were presenting this information that would be meaningful to their friends, their family, other students, not geoscientists like myself. So where did this all happen? This is a, a little bit of a dark photo, but that's okay, because it's a dark room. It kind of gives us the sense of the room was. The whole project, with the exception of the presentations, which happened here, happened in the science theater. And uh, so there's all these fixed seats. They're all facing forward. And this is where the team, the lectures happen, and this is where the team uh, meetings happen. And the students were so incredibly accommodating and, and worked totally around this really yucky room for meetings. You know, some of them would sit cross-legged here and turn around and face their teammates here and they kind of fold a laptop over top. It was remarkable. It was really remarkable. And myself and the teaching assistants would wander around up and down the aisles, and, and I connected with every group at least once a week. And so each group usually got about 10 to 15 minutes, maybe five minutes talking with me about their project, and another five or, or 10 minutes talking with the teaching assistant. So they got a lot of support and mentoring throughout this process as well. So, at each given former lecture slot, there would be 20 teams. There's about 60, 62 teams. So about 20 teams would come once a week at a different time slot. So how did it all end? I would have to say that my expectations were exceeded. Uh, 
there were some teams that did unbelievable projects that went above and beyond what the expectations were. They drove out to sites they were interested in and put together hiking maps and geology. They interviewed one group that was doing um, um, landslide risk in Canmore, drove out to Canmore and met with the geotechnical engineer that works for the city of Canmore and interviewed them. And went to, I was just blown away by how much work some of the teams, not all of them, but some of them put into this project. And all of the teams, I have to say, even though some you know, went above and beyond and some did a you know, little less than what was expected, which was fine, that was their choice. Um, but they were all enthusiastic when they came to the team meetings. All the teams attended all of their team meetings. Uh, and they, I would say, as a whole, were very motivated throughout the whole experience. And I would just skip off to these team meetings uh, for those six weeks, as with the teaching assistants. And we'd leave with this buzz. We'd, we'd go, and then we'd leave the room. And, and I'll never forget one of the teaching assistants saying to me as we were leaving, I said, wow, this is about the third week. Well, you know, what are you going to do, like, for the rest of your career teaching? I was like, well, what do you mean by that? He said, well, well, how can you go back? I'm like, you know, you can go back to lecturing. He said, yeah, yeah, how do you go back to lecturing? I said, well, you know, there's, there's time for lecturing. It's okay. Um, and I said, why do you say that? And he said, well, it's like with lecturing, you don't allow for all this creativity to blossom. It's like it's, it never gets a chance to come out. And I thought, coming from this teaching assistant that was a fourth year student, that, that was really a remarkable reflection. And, and I, I felt that way as well, but, but for them to see that as well, I thought, yeah, okay, it's not, it's not just me. I'm not just sort of biased, looking at this through the biased lens of I want the team projects to work. And um, so I would say the whole experience was really quite positive. Now, there were some teams that didn't get along, and I had to deal with that conflict and help them work their way through. There's no question. There were some teams that needed some, some serious counseling halfway through because they were insisting on doing something that was not going to fit the project criteria. And the teaching assistants were fantastic for that. They would go in there and say, um, look guys, do you want to C on this project or do you want to A on this project? They, they did things that I never could do. I couldn't go talk to a team. I wouldn't go talk to a team like that. But the teaching assistants had this ability to go do that. And so there were some difficult times with some of the teams, but we worked through them. Um, every group showed up for their presentation. Every project was handed in on time. And there were no major team meltdowns, and we didn't have to disassemble any of the teams. Now, um, I asked, uh, I had students do an anonymous survey at the end of the course and handed in through Blackboard because I wanted honest feedback about what they felt the experience was like. And one of the questions I asked was, should the team components, should this team project be kept as a component of Geology 301? And uh, we're still uh, coding this, we're, we're still analyzing this data. It's a humongous data set, as you can imagine. But after a preliminary look at them, I would say an overwhelming majority of students said, yes, keep the team projects. They had suggestions for improvements. But um, when it came down to should it stay or should it go, uh, I would say about 95% of the students said, yes, stay. There were a handful of them who were like, I don't know, I don't care. And there was one student that was quite strongly recommended, no, this course should not have the team project. Um, what I also found really quite interesting was about 20% of the class described the, the experience they had in the project as transformative, that it changed their way of thinking about science, and to me, that was, that was it. That's what I wanted these students to have. I, they didn't need to know more about the tectonic history of the Cordillera. In my view, this class, this particular class, is very special because it can, we can afford to have this opportunity of a transformative experience through something like a team project. Um, they, this was interesting too. The one thing students commented on, and I really agreed with them, was they would like the presentation format at the end to be modified somehow because they felt like they missed out on learning about their other, what the other teams did. And they wanted the experience to be able to learn from what their teammates did as well. And so that's something I'm kind of mulling over in my head is how, how to best do that. Because as you can imagine, presenting these 60 team projects is it, just a, it's just quite a, quite a logistical feat. But the students did say they wanted the opportunity and would recommend somehow structuring the presentations have an opportunity so they could learn more and see more of the other team projects. The USRI ratings. Well, I wanted to see if this was true. If 
the USRI ratings would go down the tubes. And so I had um, the ratings from 2006, 2007, 2008, and um, the ratings stayed more or less the same. So there was only one little drop, which actually isn't statistically significant, but kind of interesting to me, was in the category of did you learn a lot in this course, which is one of the questions on the uh, universal student rating of instruction course evaluation. That dropped a little bit relative to 2007 and 2006. But the overall instruction category was pretty much on par. So the traditional versus this modified course, um, the, the, the students did not evaluate it in a, in a radically different way. Um, so I was, I was pleased with that. One of the things I did throughout the term was I kept a journal on how many hours I was working on this newly modified class. Because I wanted to compare how many hours I spent in the teaching it in the traditional way, which is the um, bar here in blue, compared to uh, the bar here in green, which was the modified way. Now what I didn't include on this was the, the hours that I spent thinking about this project from the end of 2007 <laughs> to when I actually met with Patty, which was around November, I think, around this time last year, and actually started working on all the pre-course preparation. I didn't include that here, and that, I, I don't know how many hours that was, because that was a lot of you know, walking home from work, thinking about it time that I didn't log. But the time I, times I did log was when I started meeting with Patty and actually started developing the outline and the grading rubric and the project design. So, yeah, I spent probably double the time than I did in the year before um, preparing for the course to begin in hours. So these are all numbers in hours. Uh, lecture prep time went down. Uh, I usually spend for a 50 minute lecture on average, even if it's a course I've done before and I have a series of lecture notes put together, two, three, sometimes four hours before the lecture preparing. So in 2007, I spent about 110 hours preparing lectures. And as you can imagine, that, that almost went down in half. I had to spend a little more time than I say would have to this winter, because what I had to do was take those 13 weeks of lectures and, and turn them into six weeks of lectures. And that, that took some time and some thought. So as you can imagine, my lecturing time, the actual time lecturing went down. But my time mentoring went up. And I, I classified mentoring time as time I spent talking to students about their work in this course, which was really quite minimal in the traditional way. You know, I had office hours all throughout the week, but students rarely came by my office hours. And there'd maybe be five minutes of questions from students after class. So the mentoring time was very little in the traditional way, but high. And I was pleased with that, because I wanted to increase the faculty-student interaction. Test prep time went way down. C preparing multiple choice tests, stop me if you've heard this one before or done this, is incredibly time consuming. And um, so by not having a final exam, that was one of the things that, major things I got rid of, coupled with getting rid of lectures, I, I saved myself a lot of time in test prep. So I had to prep the first the term test, or the test that happened in class, but not the final. Grading time went up, and you'll note here that grading, uh, I did not do that alone. It was myself and four TAs, so there's now five of us grading these team projects. And in total, we spent about 25 hours grading the proposals, the projects, and looking over the contracts. So the total amount of time I spent in the traditional was actually slightly more than in the modified. This was with support. Without these four teaching assistants helping with the grading, um, this green bar, I suspect, would probably be past the blue bar. Is that 25 hours of grading just you, or is that all five of you? Is that this five was, hours each? This was all of us, yeah. Yeah, so when we graded the, the team projects, because we had the rubric, so that was really great. So we had this rubric, and, and we collected the projects, and we just st stuck one of the grading rubrics to each of the projects, and then we got together as a group, so there were the five of us as a group, and it was about four hours in a room with all the projects spread about, and um, yeah, yeah, that's about how long it took. Yeah, it was actually, with, with the rubric, I mean, rubrics are amazing. They, they really just, and it was, we spent a lot of time developing the rubric, though. So, you know, a lot of this time up front, I have to say, was developing the grading rubrics, uh, which, which then, I think, saved us a lot of time, made this process very efficient. So, 
My personal reflection on this, and this was based on my experience and the TA's experience and, um, and the students' experience that they reported back on to me, was I repeat the team projects in Geology 301. It's a very valuable component. It was enjoyable for me. I had an enjoyable experience. And, and that's kind of important because for me personally, teaching these large lecture classes uh, for 13 weeks straight starts to get, um, I start to lose my enthusiasm because I'm not getting that connection with students. So this to me uh, made it very worth it. It was very enjoyable. I got to connect with students and talk to them and meet with them and see them learn and grow and be excited. I would simplify the presentation form that came out of the student comments and my own personal feeling when it was all going on was, gosh, we gotta make this more simple and somehow make the projects more available for all the students to look at. Uh, this is not going to be possible for a while, but I, I really would like to change the room, to have a room that's more conducive. As you can imagine, I requested at the beginning of uh, the winter term last year to have a lecture theater for six weeks, and then I requested for the following six weeks to have three, uh, or to have one room at the same time, which would allow for uh, groups of 80 students to meet, and, and actually the, the alarm bells went off. What on earth are you doing? I, you can't do that. You've got a lecture. You have a contract with these students that they get 36 lecture out of. Just, it went on and on and on. Why on earth would you want to change the room? What's happening? Are these students not getting three hours of instruction anymore? So I kind of let it go. Oh, no, actually, yeah, forget that request. I guess I didn't mean it. Um, but I, I would like to work around getting, getting a room that's, that's just better for meeting as a team. And I would modify the team contract, and I have slightly. Uh, because in the challenges section, when I first gave all the students the team, the team contract to do, and they handed them back to me, and I realized in the what are you going to do if a challenge comes up section, uh, the number one thing that almost every team said they were going to do is, I'm going to go talk to the instructor. And I was like, oh, no, that's not what I wanted you to do. But they didn't know that. So I actually had to give the team contracts back and say, okay, I am definitely going to be helping if, if something goes wrong in your team, but I want to be your last resort. So I asked the teams to go back. And so that was kind of a two-stage process to them getting the contracts done. So I've just worked the contract out now. So they can have me as an option, but it's like option number five. Um, OK. There's some people I really think need acknowledgment, because really, I, 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 I just sort of facilitated this. Um, all the students who took Geology 301 um, really need to be acknowledged, because they bought into it. And they did it, and they performed, and they, in some cases, exceeded expectations and the performance that I wanted. Patty from the Teaching and Learning Center, just great. She was go, Leslie, go, and, and, and helped develop materials and helped provide information, and that was fantastic. The teaching assistants, Chris, Dustin, Ann, and Chris Stevens, were also like, they were so keen. They just thought that was the best TA experience they had had. And they liked learning with the students, and they liked talking to the students, and listening to all the different diverse ideas that all these students from around campus were bringing to the table. And then I have another cheerleader that actually came, uh, a colleague of mine, Jim, I don't want to single you out and embarrass you, Jim, but he's back there, who, who had helped tremendously with really just like, go Leslie, go, and came to the team meetings and watched what was happening in the classes and, and, and mentored some of the, the teams as well. And, and that was really, really helpful. So um, if you have any questions or comments, if you want any of the materials, I, I'm happy to send them all to you. Um, I can send you the outline, the rubrics we use, the contracts we use, the, the team evaluation stuff that we use. Um, so you can grab my email here, or, or I can take it down and send this to you. And I thank you all so much for, for listening to this, this story. So I'll open it up now for questions.
the, the project grade that they got it was going to have to be considered mm -hmm. um, to be weighted differently. Yes. No one got below that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I actually didn't quite know what I was going to do. I mean, I had it written out what I was going to do, mm -hmm. which was going to be, there was going to be, um, yeah, that, that if somebody, um, by all other teammates, got a collective score below like 50, mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a numerical skill they used, that that was going to affect um, how much they got on the team project grade. Mm -hmm. No one got below that score, so I really didn't have to deal with it. But what I had written in the team evaluation section of the course mm -hmm. was that uh, if you got below 50, um, that, that your, your project would be multiplied based on how much lower than 50 you got. So you would, if you got 40, mm -hmm. then there was like a, a numerical value that would be taken off of your, your that person's particular team project grade. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's what was going to happen. It didn't have to happen. Okay. But yeah. it's it's a huge challenge. I mean, it was it was my that was my biggest fear actually, and, and I know I'm going to have to prepare myself for that because if we continue going with this, it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, but that's how I had. To, there's actually a lot in the literature. It's very interesting of all these interesting and complicated, some complicated, some simple scales that people use. Mm -hmm. um, but the and the one that I kept coming to that kind of made sense to me was yeah that, that there's this numerical scale, scoring scale. You're, you're scored by your team members and you self-score. Mm -hmm. And if that score was below a certain value, then there was, there was um, some component, the, the project component of mm -hmm. your, your particular grade would be reduced. So yeah. that's, what, that's what, how I was gonna deal with it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've had to deal with it. You have, okay. And okay. I'm not, I have to admit I'm not highly consistent <laughs> on that. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I've tried to be fair about, but, um, I'm just curious if anyone else here has has dealt with that. Oh yeah, Jim. Um, yeah. She put, she put my name there, but uh, I'm emeritus, and I refuse to have anything to do with evaluating students anymore. I've done all of that that I'm ever going to do, and so the students know this when we go in. I mean, I tell them, or Leslie tells them, and they will talk to me in a much more frank manner, to the point than I ever got. While I was teaching, and there was, there are these these cases where somebody was coming close to a meltdown, yeah. and I can go up and talk to them and say, "Look, here's the situation," and they will listen to me. Yeah. And I'm not in a in a position of power. I'm more like an old grandfather. <laughs> and yeah. this has, I know, in a couple of cases, I've never talked to Leslie about it because it's. It's somewhat a confidential between me and the students, but this does happen. And if there's a way to get some old geezer like me into the thing, I think yeah, the I think there there were there were teams that if there hadn't been early interventions would have ended up like that. Mm -hmm. But there were a handful of teams that came to me. There were a handful of teams I'm hearing about <laughs> went to gym, which was great. Maybe I always need to have a neutral party there. Yeah. Um, that that I think mitigated that. Now some of the evaluations. You know, came dangerously close for a few students evaluated one particular person, uh, but it never went below that one that number. Well, and, yeah. and the thing that I wrestled with on it too is that is that so they don't go below the number, but they get a yeah. fifty-five yeah. percent. That still tells me that that person was just barely yeah. doing the bare minimum. Absolutely. Whereas, you know, other team members were doing backflips and yeah. tons of work on the project. I know. So that's the thing that I wrestled. Anyways, it, it's, yeah, I know. I hear you. I totally hear you. Yeah. Oh. yeah. How different were your lectures from the traditional to, um, to now? They were pretty similar. They were pretty much, you know, 50 minutes. Out of that 50 minutes, most of it was lecturing. There'd be a sprinkling of maybe think, pair, share activities or some problem to work on. But that, that six weeks of lecturing, was pretty similar to how it had happened in the term. How about the temptation to take the full course loads content and cram it into six weeks? Uh, well, I didn't take all of the content. So there was some content that got jettisoned. And I recommended that students that were interested in that content do a project on that. So some of the content did go, totally go. And that was hard. That was really hard. And so, so yeah, in that six weeks, what happened was I took the original 13 weeks, um, 
squashed it down, and some, some was just removed entirely. Absolutely. Right now, 
five, which is very similar to your TA kind of kind of approach. And I would really strongly support that. All the all the indicators that we've been working with and the help that we've been getting indicates that that's a really valuable part of, of the whole process on both sides, yeah. which is what you said. Um, there's one, th two things that you mentioned that are, I think are fundamental to our success, and Cam's got more direct experience with this, just this, this term than, than I have. We've experimented with dropping a couple of things or modifying, not doing some stuff we were doing for a number of years, and it hasn't been, well, the experiment's <laughs> been successful, the results have been predictably disastrous. Um, one of them was the importance of discussion about the project early in the course and immediately before or while they're starting to execute. So those two classes that you talked about, the project stuff, running a project has presumably the classical or the stereotypical idea would be running a project has nothing to do with geology. Unfortunately, it has everything to do with learning. <laughs> so there's a bit of a bit of a conflict there. And similarly in our in our case, you know, I'm here to learn about information systems. Why why are you telling me about project teams? Well you don't always get to pick who you have to work with. You usually have to you know do something. It usually has to meet somebody's criteria. Da 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 da. So you're learning life skills here. Thank you very much. That's why we got it in here. Press on. Uh, we'll help you. We won't do it, but we'll help you do it. Um, so I think that those projects and that approach I thought if you ever come across some criticism that suggests, well, you know, you can replace this course about the pro this class about the project, no, you can't. Right. And we tried it. That's going back in this winter. Yeah. Okay. Over the course. It, it took one <laughs> trial. <It's laughs> so one I don't need to experiment <laughs> with that. No, 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 no. <laughs> the other but thing, the other thing that's well, there's a lot of research literature that supports it, but we've got a little bit of practical experience that supports it too. It's this idea of a team contract. That the team develops, not one that you impose on the team, but you say, "Here are the characteristics it's supposed to have about how you're going to work together and behave, and what your expectations of each other are." You guys figure it out, and then right. you know, yeah. it doesn't matter what the content of that is, unless it's completely frivolous. It matters that they go through the process of creating it. And again, yeah. this term, they decided not to do that. They decided not to do it. Yeah. Yes. And, and, oh, yeah. and yeah. Uh, it was a fairly vigorous discussion with some new faculty members that didn't think that that was plan well invested. Mm -hmm. And they're now discovering, much like if you give mortgages to people that actually can't afford to pay for them, <laughs> there becomes a point where you wind up paying for it. And like that's, the yeah, oil filter. That was overwhelming in the literature oh. that I had read. And, and people that I talked to that had done successful team projects are like, you got to have a contract. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. It, and it is the, you have to, I think our experience has been that you have to provide the coaching that forces them to go through the process of creating and agreeing to that product. They have to sign it individually. And the, the, the only couple of team meltdowns that I've had in, I don't know, 10 years of doing these, maybe 800 projects, something like that, have been associated with two teams that actually couldn't agree on a contract. Mm -hmm. And that played through the course later on. And, yeah, you know, I mean, a bunch of things. I think the one, there was one other characteristic that you mentioned that was quite interesting to me, and it caused me to think a little bit about this. You said the night before the first class, you thought, ooh, I don't think I'm going to yep. do this. Um, even if you feel that way, I'd be willing to bet probably real money that when you walked into the classroom the first time, you did so with an air of confidence and enthusiasm and presented to the students the idea that you really thought this was worth doing. Is that a reasonable assumption Patty, on my part? Yeah. Did I? Yeah. And the students were on the edge of their seats. You know how often the yeah. first day yeah. on their computer, they were listening to her. <laughs> well, the reason that I, that I say that is that I think, and I've come across this in, in a variety of other forms in other types of classes, and maybe, Jim, you've done the same thing. Lots of times I'm nervous about what I'm doing. But if you let the students think that you're nervous about what you're doing, they pick on, up on that really quickly. And so the leadership influence of the, the way in which the faculty member behaves and engages in, the, in whatever it is is happening really does a lot to relieve the stress that the, that 
the students might feel about, oh, am I really going to be able to do this? Am I really, you know, are they hanging me out to dry? Uh, all of that kind of stuff. And that fits with this idea of we're here to help, but we're not going to do the work for you. And when, what I tell my students, essentially, is that I see part of my job is, is giving them every opportunity to be successful in this course. If you fail, it's your fault, not mine. Not like you didn't execute. I did everything I could possibly do to allow you to be successful, and you chose not to be successful. And that's kind of the same, the same uh, confidence leadership kind of kind of context. And I, I think that that was a really important point, and I wanted to, to kind of well, bring it up. Well, the point that I made in, in disclosing yeah. my my personal feelings was, um, uh, I've been told that I I walk into a classroom and and come off as quite confident, but. Um, and I, I think I've been told that part. too. <laughs> but, I, but I'm not all the time. And, and, yeah. and, I, and I, I want to share that. I want to have a dialogue with, with my colleagues about that. Because it's not like I'm like, well, here I am, I'm just ready to do these team projects. I didn't feel that way. I'm not like and, that for every and, um, and I just threw that in because it was a bit, it was a personal, it was a transformative journey for me. And it wasn't just, oh, yeah, I think this is a fantastic idea. I'm going to run with this and it's going to be fantastic. You know, I never, I, I had moments of doubt, and, and, um, oh, we, yeah, anyway. th that happens before every class. Um, <laughs> I have office hours, actually, for my <laughs> current <laughs> students, so I should probably, um, pack up and, and not leave them waiting, but thank you so much, um, yes. for all of you. Thank you. Thank you.